Good morning, everybody. This is Appa Bryan and Appa Baseball Classics bringing to you Game 66 of the King of the Hill Tournament. The Chicago White Sox of 1959 are the current Kings of the Hill, and they have been on a remarkable run. I don't recall any series I've ever played in tabletop sports gaming where the uh, one team shut out three previous opponents, and these are not the little sisters of the poor that they're shutting out. 1957 Milwaukee Braves, 1960 Pittsburgh Pirates, and the 1961 Bronx Bombers have all been victims. White Sox starting pitching has been amazing. 27 consecutive scoreless innings. Today they all have another powerful offense. The 1961 Detroit Tigers led by Norm Cash, Lucky Calavito, and Al Kaline. Let's meet the starting lineups. First for the Tigers, Bruton, Wood, and Crash, Cash. Kaline, Calavito, Brown, Mikola, Fernandez, and Paul Foytek is on the mound. For the White Sox, Aparicio, Fox, and Landis, Kluzuski, Lawler, and Phillips, McEnany, Smith, and Tricky Dick Donovan is on the mound. We're using uh, the Marino boards, or some people know them as the odds boards. I will roll six dice at a time. It's pretty much each half inning. Read the red, white, and blue first, then the purple, yellow, and green Next, um, each pair is the same color with the large dice being red first and the smaller dice second. The Gunman's ready. Bill Bruton's ready. Here's the first pitch of today's game. 1 2 to Bruton is a ground ball to second baseman Nelly Fox, who fields it and flips to Klozuski at first base. One gone. Next batter is Jake Wood. Tigers second baseman, he rolls a 5-2, and that's a ground ball to third base. Bubba Phillips has it and throws the first and re to retire a speedy Jake Wood. All right, here's Norm Cash, 361 hitter, 41 home runs. Uh, later admitted that he used a cork bat in 1961. And Norm Cash rolls a 6-6 roll, and he gets one off the cork sweet spot. It might be, it could be. It is out of here, a home run for Norm Cash, and the Tigers take a one to nothing lead. And that's a first run off of the White Sox pitching staff in this project. Not accomplished in a particularly legal manner. Al Kaline steps to the box. Kaline rolls a 4-2, and that's a base on balls. Two outs, runner at first. Rocky Calavito, 45 homers in 1961. He rolls a 6 Four, and that's a base on balls. Pushing K line to second. Calavito is on first. He's Calavito on first is slow. We'll play it safe for all my slow runners, unless I say otherwise. And uh, that brings up catcher Dick Brown, who rolls a six four, and it's a swing and a miss for strike three. Dick Donovan is embarrassed. He's the first White Sox pitcher to give up a run in three games. It's the Tigers 1 and the White Sox coming to bat. All right, unlike Tricky Dick Donovan, who has an assortment of pitches to offer, Paul Foytek is pretty uh, straightforward for the Tigers. He's primarily a fastball pitcher. 11 and 10 in 1961 with a 3.9 earned run average. He's a grade 7 with a wide strikeout modifier. Julio Ferrisio steps in the box for Chicago and he rolls a 3 6, which is a Pop-up or a Y. Foytek has that Y, so Aparicio is a strikeout victim. As good as the Sox pitching has been, White Sox offense has not been great. They're averaging only two runs a game. Nelly Fox, though, a 306 hitter and 59 steps into the box. He hits a ground ball toward second base, picked up by Jake Wood. The throw over to Norm Cash at first. Two gone. And now Jim Landis, White Sox center fielder, rolls a 5-3. Line drive to left field by Jim Landis. That's going to be a base hit. And Rocky Calavito on left mishandles the ball. And it's a single and E7 as Jim Landis goes to second base. He's in scoring position. White Sox have the tie and run at second base. For Ted Klozuski, very underrated ball player in the 50s and early 60s. Kozuski rolls a 
four, three, and that's a comebacker back to Foytek. So Foytek survives the hit and the air. No runs, one hit and one left. Top of the second inning, Detroit one and Chicago nothing. Then McAuliffe leads off the top of the second inning for Detroit, stands in from the left side of the box with an open batting stance, holds that bat far from his body and vertically. Here's the pitch to Dick McAuliffe, who rolls a 5-5. And Dan McAuliffe strokes a single to right field. Leadoff hit for the Tigers. Fast runner at first base. D16 stealing. That's not a high success number. Second baseman Chico Fernandez turned to bat. He rolls a 1-1 roll, and that's a hit column roll. And the next roll is a 5-5. Chico drives the ball into the left center field alley, and it is deep in center field here at Comiskey Park. He's got some room to run. McAuliffe will score, and Fernandez will settle in at third with an RBI triple. Tigers two to nothing. Still no outs here in the second inning. Pitcher Paul Foytek comes to bat. All right, Foytek looks like he has a decent bat. He's got possible power numbers at 11 and 66. Pitch to Forte is a 3-3, and that's going to be a 7. Base hit for the Tiger pitcher, and Fernandez will score the third run of the game for Detroit. Paul Forte helps his own cause. And all that good uh, Chicago pitching is kind of coming down on top of them now. They've given up three runs. We're only in the second inning. Here's the top of the order, and Billy Bruton... Bruton rolls a 5-2. Ground ball to Bubba Phillips at third base. He throws to Fox covering second to get out Foytek. Throw to first is not in time. Bruton is fast down that line. Fielder's choice. Uh, let's see, one out. And here is Jake Wood. And Jake Wood rolls a 2-3, which is... 26, a ground ball to second base. That's also going to be a field of choice. Rudin's out 4-6 at second base. Wood's the base runner now at first. D30 stealing with two outs. Letter D still uh, prevents him from stealing in this situation. And he probably wouldn't want to anyway. He's got Norm Cash coming up, 361 hitter, who has already homered in this game. Uh, need another dice roll. Here's a pitch to... Norm Cash, come back here back to the mound. Donovan's got it and throws out Storm and Norman Cash. But the Tigers add two on three hits. We go to the bottom of the second inning, Detroit three and Chicago zero. All right, Sherman Law, our catcher, leads off for the White Sox in the bottom of the second inning. He's having a good project. He's three for six with a few RBIs. Only a couple of White Sox hitters are having a good, a good um, series, and that's Nellie Fox came into the game 6 for 10, and Waller, who is 3 for 6. Paul Foytek winds and puts it to Sherman Lawler, 5-2. Ground ball to third base. Dick McAuliffe corrals it and throws across the diamond. One gone. Bubba Phillips rolls a 5-5. Five, five. And Bubba Phillips hits a ground ball through the infield into center field for a base hit. Fast runner at first. Here's Jim McEnany. McEnany rolls a 6-1. Grounded to the pitcher Foytek, who pit, fills his position pretty well. He rolls and throws to uh, the shortstop, Fernandez, for one and back to first. It's a 1-6-3 inning-inning double play. Top of the third, Tigers three and the White Sox nothing. All right, let's see if Dick Donovan can get it together here in the third inning. He hails from Boston, Massachusetts, and he's got to deal with Al Kaline, Rocky Calavito, and Dick Brown and the Tiger top of the third. And I just dropped one dice on the floor, so I'm re rolling into the stadium. I use. 3 4 is the roll for Kaline. That's a fly ball to center field. Jim Landis is under it and makes the catch. Here's Rocky Calavito, 
very deliberate up there at home plate. Takes his slow practice swing and points it at the pitcher. Calavito rolls a 4-6, and that's going to be a ground ball to third base. Bubba Phillips throws out Rocky Calavito. Two gone, and here is Dick Brown, who rolls a 5-5. Five five. That's an 8. Could be a hit, and it is a two-out single for Dick Brown. He's one for two. He struck out his first time. Slow runner at first, playing it safe. Dick McAuliffe steps up to home plate. McAuliffe rolls a 4-5, and it's going to be a base on balls. And he's been on base twice. Now the 8th place hitter, Chico Fernandez. Donovan's going to pitch to him. And Chico gets a 5-4, and it's a fly out to right fielder Al Smith. No runs on a hit, two left. Bottom of the third, Tigers 3, and the White Sox 0. All right, bottom of the third inning. So far, the White Sox offense is not rolling. They have uh, two base runners, uh, two singles. There's a pitch to Al Smith. 5-4 is a fly out to right field. Brings up pitcher Dick Donovan. He rolls a 6-5, and if they pop out to the Detroit catcher, Dick Brown, two outs, top of the order, and Louis Aparicio rolls a 5-2, and if they ground out to third baseman Dick McAuliffe, three up and three down for the White Sox. Top of the four, three nothing Detroit. All right, Tiger pitcher Paul Foytek leads off. He singled his first time up and drove in a run. And this time he rolls a 2-4, which is a swing and a miss. Strike three. Dick Donovan records his first stri strikeout. Top of the order of Billy Bruton. 6-2 is the roll. And that's a comebacker. Back to Donovan. Flips underhand to first base. Two outs. Jake Wood rolls a 2-3, and that's a... Ground out to second base, so three up and three down for the Tigers. Bottom of the fourth, three nothing Detroit. All right, the 1959 AL MVP Nelly Fox leaves off for Chicago in the bottom of the fourth inning. We're down by three runs. Nelly Fox rolls a four three, which is a little dribbler. Foyte, the pitcher for Detroit, is to it quickly and throws the first. Foxes retire one out. Jim Landis. Rolls a 6-3, fly ball to right field. Two up and two down for Chicago. Here's Ted Klazuski. And Klazuski rolls a 1-1 one, one roll. That's a hit column roll. 2-5 is the second column, and that's going to be a triple for Ted Klazuski. All right, in three and a half games through this project, Chicago has hit only three extra base hits. Well, this, this is the fourth, three doubles, and now a triple. Sherm Lawler comes to bat. He rolls a 3-3 roll. And that's a 6 on the Marino board. That is going to be a long drive by Lawler. It might be. It could be. It is out of here. A two-run home run for Sherm Lawler. And actually, this time, because it's a single-column card, and a double if he had Double column card. Trim Lawler leads his team with RBIs. He now has four, came in the game with two. White Sox are back in this game. It's 3-2 to two Detroit. Bubba Phillips. Bubba Phillips rolls a 5-6. Phillips is caught looking for a call strike three. Two runs on two hits. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Detroit three and Chicago two. All right, Norm Cash is a Texan from Just Justiceburg, Texas. He was a football star in college at Saul Russ College in Alpine, Texas. He has some World Series experience. He is on, he is on the 1959 Chicago White Sox roster as a reserve player. He got four pitch hits, pitch hit appearances in the 59 World Series against the Dodgers. He will not be playing for the White Sox. Um, usually I roll to see if, if a player is on both teams that I'm playing to see which team gets him, but if he started with one team and was a backup with the other team, we'll go with the team that he started with. So North, North Cash for Detroit steps into the box. 
lot closer game now on the top of the fifth inning. 5 2 roll as I swing and a miss, strike three. Norm Cash will have to grab some pine. He's one for three with a home run. Al Kaneline rolls a 3 3 roll. That's a hit column roll, and 5 5 is going to be a drive by Kaneline. It might be, it could be, it is over the wall for a solo home run by Al Kaneline. He hit 19 of them in 1961. Tigers move to 4-2. to two. Rocky Calavito steps into the box. Danger here. Calavito rolls a 3-3. Three, three, and that's a double for Rocky Calavito. Seventh hit for the Tigers, and all but two of them have been for extra bases. One out, runner in scoring position. Tigers have Dick Donovan on the ropes. Dick Brown steps into the box. Here's some more dice rolls. Here's the pitch to Dick Brown. He rolls a 4-6. Dick Brown strikes out two gone. And Dick McAuliffe rolls a 6-5. And that's going to be a pop out to the third baseman in foul territory. One run on two hits. Bottom of the fifth, Detroit 5 and excuse me, Detroit 4, White Sox 2. All right, bottom of the fifth inning, Jim McEnany leads off for the White Sox against Paul Poitak. Roll is a 4-4, four, four. that's an 8. McEnany's nearly 2 against Poitak, makes him a 9. And that's a base hit for Jim McEnany. All right, there's going to be a pitch hitter. Let's see, it should be Al Smith's turn. Yeah, Al Smith comes off the bat. There is a pitch hitter going to the on-deck circle. It's Billy Goodman. He'll hit to Dick Donovan when we get there. All right, the roll for Al Smith is a 2-3, and that's going to be a slow roller to Jake Wood. Throws a second to retire McEnany. The total first, not in time. Fielder's church, choice. Now Smith, a fast runner, is on at first. Now here's the pitch hitter, Billy Goodman. 250 hitter in 1959. Foyta goes into his stretch. Here's the pitch. Line drive over the head of Norton Cash down the right field line. That could be extra bases. Al Smith is motoring around third. He's going to score and... Billy Goodman, the pitch hitter, slides in the second with an RBI double. Brings the White Sox within one. It is four to three. Here's a pitch to Aparicio. Bouncy ball to second base. Aparicio throws to, or Jake Wood throws to first to retire Aparicio. And the runner on second goes to third. Let's see, Tigers will play the infield in for Nellie Fox. All right, on the roll for Nellie Fox, I accidentally had the camera off. He rolled a base on ball, so now we got runners for the White Sox on first and third. And Jim Landis hits a fly ball to a medium depth right field. That's going to be the third out caught by K line. So no runs on three hits, or one run on three hits. Tigers four and the White Sox three. So manager Al Lopez of the Chicago White Sox reaches into his fine bullpen. He's going to bring out Turk Lown. Nine and two, 2.89 earned run average for the White Sox. He's a grade 14 pitcher with the X strikeout modifier. And Chico Fernandez leads off for the Detroit Tigers. They're at the eighth spot of their batting order. And Fernandez rolls a 2-2 roll. High pop-up on the infield, taken by Louis Aparicio. One out. Paul Fortek will stay in the game and hit for himself. He rolls a 4-4. Four, four. And that's going to be an 8 against a 16. That's going to be an out. And it's also a pop-up on the infield. This time, the 
Sox third baseman Bubba Phillips takes charge. Two outs. And Billy Bruton, the leadoff batter, rolls a 1-1 roll. That's a hit column. And 1-4 is a double for Billy Bruton. It's been a torrent of extra base hits hit by the uh, Tigers today. Brings up Jake Wood. Wood rolls a 4-2, and that's a swing and a miss for strike three. Bottom of the sixth, 4-3 to three Tigers. The muscle man, Big Clue, will lead off the last of the sixth inning. Brings up his... 52-inch bicep, short clip, uniform sleeves. Here's a pitch to Kurt Klozuski. 3-3 roll for Klozuski, hit column roll. 1-2 is just a single, though, 7. Take Klozuski is 2-3 for three with a single and a triple. Brings up Sherm Lawler. Lawler is 1-2 for two with a home run, and he rolls a 4-1. That's going to be a double play ground ball. Hit toward shortstop Chico Fernandez to Jake Wood to Norm Cash at first base. In time, 6-4-3, twin killing. So base is clear and two gone for Bubba Phillips. And Bubba Phillips strokes a single. Brings us to Jim McEnany, who is 1-for-2 on the day. His role is a 3-2, and that's a ground out to second base. No runs on two hits and one left. Top of the seventh inning, the Tigers 4 and the White Sox 3. All right, Norm Cash will lead off the top of the seventh inning for the Tigers. He came up with the Chicago White Sox. It was traded in December of 1960 to the Cleveland Indians. So you see him on Topps 1960 baseball card in a Cleveland baseball cap. But he never played an inning for the Indians. He got traded again to the uh, Detroit Tigers. He was very popular with his White Sox teammates. He was quite a character. Um, he was a comedian, both on the field and in the clubhouse. He liked to sing country and western He's from Texas in a clubhouse. Uh, one time when he got picked off first base, he tried to call time out. In another interest, instance, Cash was stranded on second base during a rainstorm. And then when play resumed, he went and returned to third base. The umpire said, what are you doing over here? And Cash said, I stole third. The umpire says, when did that happen? And Cash said, during the rain delay. There is an num endless number of stories around Norm Cash. Turk Lown is in his second inning of work. So he will be um, in his fatigue inning. Norm Cash leads off for the Tigers. He rolls a 3-5. That's a 9. And there's a line drive signal by Norman Cash to lead off the 7th inning for Detroit. He's the only guy, by the way, in the 1960s to hit 20 or more home runs in all the seasons from 61 through 69. Al Kaline comes to bat. He rolls a 1-5, which is a 10. But that's going to be against uh, Turk Lund, That's going to be a pop-up to the shortstop. One gone. Rocky Calavito. Calavito rolls 2-4, swing and a miss. Strike three. Calavito's one for three with a double. Two gone. And Dick Brown, the catcher, don't sleep on him. He hit 16 home runs. Dick Brown rolls a 3-1. That's a base hit, and Cash will stop at second. First and second, Tigers. One more bad thing to happen to Turk Lown. His grade will go down by five points. Dick McAuliffe comes to bat. McAuliffe rolls a 5-2, and that's a ground out to third base. So no runs on two hits. Seventh inning stretch time, Detroit 4 and Chicago 3. Well, Fortech is ready to pitch to 28 batters. He has so far faced only 25. And he'll be fa facing the bottom of the Sox order. It's going to be Al Smith. And then a pitch hitter for the pitcher. I already see a pitch hitter coming out on deck and then the top of the order. Al Smith goes up, up to the plate. And rolls a 5-5. That's an 8. 
And Al Smith rips a leadoff single for the, the White Sox. Potential tie and run at first base. D23 stealing. Jungle Jim Rivera will be the pitch hitter for the White Sox. If Smith wants to steal second base, 11 through 44, he'll be safe. Um, he's a tie and run. We're at the bottom of the order, and then going to the top. We want to hit into a double play here. And they are the go go Sox, so there he goes. Catcher Dick Brown throws the second base. Too late, stolen base. Al Smith is on second. Jungle Jim Rivera, 220 hitter. He's going to try to lay one down. But it toward the mound, picked up by Foytek to throw to first. Sacrifice is successful. And Smith goes to third. One gone. Tyen runs 90 feet away for Louis Aparicio. Detroit is going to play the infield in. And Aparicio's role is a 2-3. Ground ball toward second base. Base hit past Jake Wood. Smith scores. RBI single for Louis Aparicio. And Sox tie it up. Detroit 4 and Chicago 4. And that brings up Nellie Fox, but not until the Detroit Tigers change pitchers. And Detroit will bring in relief pitcher Hank Gary. Pretty good in 1961, even better in 62 when he led the American League in the ERA. But in 61, he is a grade B reliever. 14 is his Marino number. And he's got a wide strikeout and debut modifier. Stolen base leader Aparicio is at first, and his chances to steal second or 11 through 56 with the modifications. Here's the stretch and the pitch, and there he goes. Dick Brown's roll for the throw is 31, and that's not going to do it. Aparicio steals second. And in the seventh inning, we are really seeing the Go-Go Sox in action. And you set of dice rolls. We have gone through six. So I'll re-roll all the dice. There's only one out in the inning. And let's see, it's a 1-2 roll for Nelly Fox. Fox hits it on the nose, but lines out to Jake Wood at second base. Two outs. And Jim Landis rolls a 1-2, and that's a ground out to Jake Wood at second base. 4-3. to three. But Chicago ties the score on one, uh, two hits. Go to the eighth, it's 4-4. Four to four. On to pitch the eighth inning for manager Al Lopez and the Chicago White Sox is Barry Latman. He is a grade C pitcher or eight with the master ratings with a Y strikeout modifier. We'll be facing Chico Fernandez and then the pitcher. Well, you see a pitch hitter out on deck and ace reliever for the Tigers. Terry Fox is warming up in the bullpen. Here's the pitch to Fernandez. He rolls a 5-5. And Fernandez leads off with a single for the Tigers. He is two for four, single and a triple. Fast runner at first base, D24 stealing. Latman's move to first is pretty good, plus two. And Lawler's good as a throwing catcher. Three to his favor, so you got to take five numbers off that steal rating. Makes him a... D19, not great. At any rate, Vic Wirtz comes up the bat, pitch hitting for the pitcher from York, Pennsylvania. Wirtz rolls a 6-4. Round ball above with Phillips at third. He goes to second for one and over to first. 5-4-3 double play. And Chico Fernandez is not getting up at second base. He is injured, so let's find a replacement for him. And let's see if the Tigers win this game off the roll to see how long that injury is. But let's carry on. There's two outs, and the bases are clear for the top of the order of Billy Bruton. Bruton rolls a 6-1, and that is a fly out to right field. 
No runs on a hit. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Still a 4 4 tie. Okay, uh, changes for the Tigers. First of all, Terry Fox comes in to pitch. He is a grade 23, 5 and 2, with a 1.41 earned run average for the Tigers. Y and Z strikeout modifiers. And former Washington center Reno Vitoya goes to play shortstop to replace Chico Fernandez, who is injured. Ted Klazuski leads off for the White Sox in the bottom of the eighth inning. He has two for three with a single and a triple. Swings the bat from the left side. And Terry Fox is a right-hander. Here is the pitch. 3-1 roll to Klazuski. Grab ball to third base. Um, McCall throws the first, clears out. That brings up Sherm Lawler. His roll is a 3-3 roll. That's a 6 and will be a double, unless there's any little letters in, in here. Let's see. Lawler is a negative 2 against 23 to 25. 6 on the 25 is a blank. No in there. And it's a double for Sherman Lawler. Here's Bubba Phillips, a 264 hitter. His role is a 5-6. Pop up on the infield. Tigers Dick Wood, second baseman, takes charge and makes the catch. Two outs. It's going to be up to Jim McEnany to get him in. Fourth roll is a 45. That's going to be a base on balls, I believe. It is. McEnany takes first on the free pass. Al Smith is a batter, and he takes a mighty cut and swings and misses for strike three. No runs, one hit, and two left. Top of the ninth, we're still tied 4-4. Four to four. All right, Barry Lattman is a rated starting pitcher. He could go a while, and he is back out there to pitch the top of the ninth inning. Top part of the order, 2, 3, and 4. That's Wood, Cash, and K-Line. Here's a pitch to Jake Wood. 1-6 is a ground ball to the shortstop. Aparicio scoops and smoothly throws to first. He is a smooth operator at short. One down. Norman Cash. Cash rolls a 5-1. And Storm and Norman lines a single in the left field. Average speed of first base. There's a dangerous out K line. He homered in the fifth inning. His roll is a 1-4, and that's a fly out to left field. Two gone. And Rocky Calavito rolls a 3-1. That's a 9. Calavito skies one deep to center field, but there is room for Jim Landis, and he makes the catch. Bottom of the ninth, Tigers 4 and White Sox 4. All right, Terry Fox will come back on for his second inning of work. This will be his fatigue inning. He's pitching to pitcher Barry Latman is going to stay in the game. Here's a pitch to Latman. And Latman rolls a 3-6. Popped up. Or Y. Fox has the Y, so it's not a pop-up. It's a strikeout. One gone. Louis Aparicio rolls a 5-5. Ground ball to third base. McAuliffe has got a hurry to throw to first. He is out at first. Two outs. Nellie Fox. Let's see, Fox rolls a 2-3, and that's going to be a comebacker back to Fox, so Fox will retire Fox. 1-3. to three. Extras at Comiskey. 4-4 four, four tie. All right, buckle in. There are no ghost runners on my channel. No ghost runners at second base for extra innings. Barry Lapman returns to the mound. He'll be pitching to Dick Brown, Dick McAuliffe, and Reno Vittoria. There's a pitch to Dick Brown. 6-4 is a swing and a miss. Tiger catcher strikes out. One out. Here's Dick McAuliffe. McAuliffe rolls a 1-1 roll. He's got a little power. Well, only six homers, not so much. But he did have as many as 20 in a season in his career. 
uh, second column roll is a 1-6. It's going to be a double for Dick McAuliffe. Runner on second base in scoring position with one away. Reno Bertoya, who came in to replace Chico Fernandez when he got injured sliding. The roll is a 6 6 roll. That's a hit column roll for Reno Bertoya. And 21 is a double for Bertoya. And that will definitely score McAuliffe. 5 to 4 Tigers. Bertoya. Didn't know he was going to play today, but he could be the hero. Tigers take a one-run lead over the Kings of the Hill. All right, manager Al Lopez calls time. He's going to bring in Jerry Staley, a right-handed. He is pitcher. He is a grade 17 with a Z modifier. So Barry Latman goes out two and a third innings. So far, he's given up no runs, but he's we well, he gave up one run, and he's responsible for the runner at second base. Bubba Morton comes on to pitch hit for the Tiger pitcher. And Bubba Morton is a uh, native of the District of Columbia, grew up in Washington, D.C. Bubba Morton's role is a 4-6. And that's a swing and a miss, strike three, two outs. Top of the order, and Billy Bruton, we need another die roll. Bruton rolls a 2-6, and that's going to be a ground out to third. But the Tigers get one on two hits, back-to-back -back doubles by McAuliffe and Bertoya. Tigers lead 5-4, to four, last of the 10th inning. All right, it's going to fall to Ron Klein to try to preserve this victory uh, for Detroit. He was a longtime relief pitcher in the ma major leagues. I normally think of him pitching with um, Washington Senators, very successful reliever over there from Calgary, Pennsylvania. So it's going to be Jim Landis. Ted Klazuski and Sherman Lawler batting in this inning. They're in the middle of the heart of their order here. There's a pitch to Landis. 5-6 is a swing and a miss. Strike three. Steve Klein's off to a good start here for the Tigers. Ted Klazuski rolls a 5-6, which is a swing and a miss. Strike three. And Steve Klein, the reliever, is, comes out spitting fire. Here's Sherm Lawler, who's driven in two runs with a home run and a double in this game. Lawler's roll is a 4-6, and it's a ground ball to his shortstop. Picked up by Reno Vittoria to throw to first. That's the ball game. We have new Kings of the Hill. Too bad for the Sox. They could have moved into first place in this tournament with a win today, but it didn't happen for them. Detroit knocks them off 5-4. to four. We'll be back with the line score. Really was an amazing run by the Chicago White Sox uh, to win their first three games by a shutout, but they fall today to the Tigers. Tigers got five runs on 14 hits and one error. White Sox four runs on 11 hits and no errors. Barry Latman takes the loss for Chicago, and Terry Fox gets the victory with Ron Klein getting the save. Home runs in the game by Detroit were by Norm Cash in the first inning solo homer. Now K-Line. Hit one in the fifth inning, a solo homer. Sherm Lawler had a two-run home run in the fourth for Chicago. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and may God bless. Our next video will be the 1961 Detroit Tigers taking on the 1962 San Francisco Giants from Tiger Stadium in Detroit. And that game I'll play uh, to tomorrow and it'll go up from Monday. But I think uh, there might not be a game on Tuesday. Uh, probably we'll resume on Wednesday. We're going out of town for the weekend and it's going to be a long weekend. We're getting a little micro, micro van and we're following my grandson and his travel baseball team. We'll be out in Western Kansas. So um, Monday there'll be a game, Tuesday, Probably not. Anyway, God bless. Thanks for watching.